Dana Bash is in Milwaukee with former Vice President Mike Pence. Dana. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice President. Thank you very much for being here. I want to, uh, because this was on another network, I want to play for our viewers one of the exchanges that you had, one of the very animated exchanges, this one with the former governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley. Okay. When it comes to a federal ban, let's be honest with the American people and say it will take 60 Senate votes. It will take a majority of the House. So in order to do that, let's find consensus. Can't we all agree that we should ban late-term abortions? Can't we all agree that we should encourage adoptions? Can't we all agree that doctors and nurses who don't believe in abortion shouldn't have to perform them? Can't we all agree that contraception should be available? And can't we all agree that we are not going to put a woman in jail or give her the death penalty if she gets an abortion? Let's treat this like, the, like a respectful issue that it is and humanize the situation and stop demonizing the situation. To be honest with you, Nikki, you're my friend, but uh, consensus is the opposite of leadership. When the Supreme Court returned this question to the American people, they didn't just send it to the states only. It's not a states only issue, it's a moral issue. And I promise you, as President of the United States, the American people will have a champion for life in the Oval Office. Can't we have a minimum standard in every state in the nation that says when a baby is capable of feeling pain, an abortion cannot be allowed. A 15-week ban is an idea whose time has come. It's supported by 70 percent of the American people, but it's going to take unapologetic leadership, leadership that stands on principle and expresses compassion for women okay. in crisis hold, hold pregnancies. I'll do that as president of the United States. Be, be honest with the American people. I am we haven't honest. had 45 pro-life senators in over 100 years, so no Republican president can ban abortions any more than a Democrat president could ban all those state laws. Don't make women feel like they have to decide on this issue when you know we don't have 60 Senate votes in the House. Mr. Vice President, that was a, uh, a fascinating exchange for a couple of reasons. One is uh, one of the questions was came after Governor DeSantis was asked about abortion, and he talked about the fact that you cannot uh, basically tell places like New York and California how to deal with abortion in the same way you can do red states like Indiana, for example. But you got, you got into it there with Nikki Haley. What was your impression of that exchange in the moment? Well, I thought it was a good, vigorous exchange, but whether it be with Governor DeSantis or, uh, or Nikki Haley or others on stage, frankly, most of the candidates running, including the one that didn't show up tonight, are all trying to relegate the question of abortion as a state's only issue. As I said, it's not a, it's not a state's only issue. It's a moral issue. And when the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, they returned the issue of abortion to the states and the American people. The American people elect state legislators and governors, but they also elect presidents uh, and senators and congressmen. And that's why I, I said, if, if I'm president of the United States, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to champion pro-life protections in every state in the country. Uh, with principle and with compassion for women in crisis pregnancies. But I'm also going to call for and lead for a minimum national standard of 15 weeks. I was, I was glad to see at least one other candidate on the stage endorse that. But, but to see so many others, whether it be Vivek, whether it be Ron DeSantis, whether it be Nikki Haley, walking away from this principle, relegating it to the states, uh, I think it was disappointing to me. It was probably disappointing to millions of Americans. And you are, I'm sure, well aware that part of the reason why some of your competitors aren't going there on the national uh, ban that you're talking about is because they think that that is a, a, a losing argument in a national, excuse me, in a general election. Well, I, I, I get that. But honestly, I think when we talk about the right to life, with unapologetic principle, but also with deep compassion uh, for women who are struggling with crisis pregnancies, that, that we advance adoption reform, that we show we care as much about newborn children as unborn children. I think we can make incredible progress. But on this issue of a 15-week minimum ban, Dana, uh, 70, 72 percent of the American public supports uh, a minimum standard at the national level that says once a baby in the womb can feel pain, that we ought to limit abortion after that period of time. 
to me, there's not a consensus in Washington. That's why it needs new pro-life leadership. You and I were joking when you came up here that uh, before the debate, you going at it with Vivek Ramaswamy the way that you did over and over on various issues tonight was not on my bingo card. Uh, I want to play for our viewers some of the sparring that you did with him. I'm not sure I exactly understood Mike Pence's comment, but I'll let you all parse that out. For me, it's pretty simple. That's something a U.S. president can do with focus, and I'll deliver on well, it. Well, let me explain it to you. Let me explain it to you, Vivek, if I can. I'll go slower this time. I, you know, I, I sometimes struggle with the reading Look, I was, uh, right I was a House conservative <laughs> leader before it was cool. I balanced budgets and cut taxes when I was governor. I mean, look, Joe Biden has weakened this country at home and abroad. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring in people without experience. Now that everybody's gotten their memorized, pre-prepared slogans out of the way, we can actually have a real discussion now. The, the, the reality and the fact of the matter is... Was that one of yours? You were prepared for this. Do you see him as a threat? No, I was prepared to make the case for the conservative agenda. Uh, but and, you were specific uh, with him, well, with look, uh, look, rookie, and the fact that he look, was not I believe, and I say ready. this with great humility, you, you've known me a long time, because I was a conservative leader in Congress for 12 years, because I led Indiana as a conservative governor, because I was vice president in a consequential conservative administration, I think without a doubt. I am the most qualified, most tested, and most ready candidate for president of the United States in this field. And as I said, whether it be Vivek or others, no one can match that experience. But my argument with him had more to do with, with values. When I, I hear him saying that America needs a, a new national identity, the American people have an identity. Uh, we, it's a faith-filled country. We love freedom unfailingly generous. I mean, the American people are the best people on earth. We, as I said, we just got to have government as good as our people. And that and on foreign policy, uh, I, I just had to call him out as somebody that believes America is the leader of the free world. Your former boss obviously was not here. Uh, you were very clearly trying to make the point about January 6th, about what you did. You, you wanted to make sure that your competitors had an answer for whether or not they believe right. that you did the right thing. Um, are you hoping that the former president was watching tonight and heard what you said? Well, I, I'm hoping the American people are watching. But what about him? Because for the last two and a half years, the president and many of his allies have been out saying something just didn't so. I mean, under the Constitution of the United States, states certify elections. There were irregularities, Dana, but once those were reviewed in the courts, once, once states certified the elections, objections could be heard in the Congress. But my duty under the Constitution was to preside over a joint session of Congress where votes would be open and counted, no more, no less. And I frankly was gratified uh, uh, to see the, uh, the moderators of tonight's debate really ask every single one of those candidates whether or not we kept our oath to the Constitution of the United States. So my, I, I didn't have an audience of one on this one. My hope is that the American people who have been misled about my responsibilities under the Constitution know that on that day the president asked me to put him over my oath to the Constitution. I chose the Constitution, and I always will. Sir, thank you so much. Appreciate you joining us.